you guys are always wondering how is it that we produce and edit our awesome podcast episodes and that is because we use Filmora. Filmora is an editing software that has an amazing range of features that makes editing quick and efficient. It has instant mode through which you can instantly add templates and use them, auto beat sync to quickly sync your edits with the audio you like and speed ramping for smooth and fast transitions and edits. Filmora also has a huge library of effects which will make your videos reach the top level. Speech to text is my favorite because if you want to add subtitles then this feature is going to save you so much time. I am not kidding. Cause for an editor saving time and being efficient is priority. You can very easily use music visualizer and color match also. So guys, make sure you try Filmora for a very smooth and efficient editing experience. Plus, Filmora is free to try. All the other details and links are in the description below. Remember that this video was created with the help of Filmora and you should try to link in the description. As a matter of fact, I'm very excited. Because I mm. want to know. Even our conversation yesterday, I think, was very enriching. Uh, usme, that conversation was so that like I don't look completely unprepared. Yeah. Like I just, mera sabse bada problem hai ki, wo hack problem hai na, life mein. So at least like some, like if I'm looking for, it's what I said at the end of it, right? Like if I'm looking for a reference, it should come to me. Right. Like, otherwise I'm like, uh, well, I feel Google hello, and then you type some weird keywords to be able to achieve what you wanted to. Right. Voila. The Google age of knowing almost everything. That's what. Yeah, dude, there was this, there was this really interesting thing by Sorkin, which he was saying that you don't, we don't browse anymore. Hmm. Uh, browsing on the internet means you have to know what you're looking for. Hmm. Uh, you can't walk into a library, pick up an encyclopedia, and that's the true meaning of browsing, right? Mm. Like, uh, you just go from page to page, just keep reading whatever. Yeah, and yeah. you were like, chal, aaj main aar usse kuch aur fir aisa. Uh, so, but that, that just that now you have to actually know what you're looking for. A website, hoti thi, yeah. uh, it was actually not even a, yeah, it was a website, but then it became a, what's it called? Uh, <clears throat> when on Chrome, you download something and it's a, a plugin. Plug-in, correct. I didn't want to say this yesterday. I'm telling you this. I'm ready for you, bro. So, there used to be this plug-in called Stumble Upon. Right. And that I thought was true browsing, but it wasn't even, it still wasn't true browsing hmm. because uh, it did that typically internet thing even in those days of asking you what you like. Hmm. And the minute somebody asks you what you like, it's a curated form of what's going to be presented to you, right? Hmm. Because... You're never going to actually discover something that you didn't think you would discover because you are, you've told them that this universe ke andar mere ko sari de de, main stumble kar lunga us pe. And so stumble upon was that. Right. It was some form of so I did all kar diya tha. Uh, hmm. And then at some point I realized that that's a stupid idea. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> because it shows you that you don't want yeah, to And now attention span is getting shorter. Right. So let us please Move okay, <laughs> the one thing I insist upon is we because f going f forward into my content journey, I want my content to also be like it rather completely be in English. So as much as we can stick to that, that'd be um, easier for me. People keep asking me here, yeah, they're like, what kind of content do you make? And I always have to like present this diluted, oh, you know, it is mostly in Hindi. And then I cannot pass it on to or more people that are interested. So I'm now trying to do as much as I can in English. Is that is that? I am too. I'm so a fan of okay. that. Okay. Brilliant. My Hindi, if I mean, my Hindi is Bombay Hindi. Right. So, uh, I mean, and all that. Uh, right, like that kind of thing. Yeah, I know. And it's also whatever, whatever little, uh, like, it's funny because when you sit down to write, your thought process has to be aligned to the language that you're writing in. Hmm. Right. Now, I think in English, predominantly, I think in English. So, when I start to write, so initially, the structure used to be think in English, translate into Hindi and type. Right. And not Devanagari also. You're still typing in Roman. So, Khana is K-H-A-N-A. Right, right, right. 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 Uh, so, you're actually playing, you're literally doing thinking in English, translating into Hindi, translating it back into Roman script to be able to write it. So, you're never really truly at any point thinking in Hindi. Mm. And so, then I started doing this thing where I used to sit down and I used to just write shit in Hindi that made no sense. Okay. It was just words uh, that I was just, I was almost doing, it was almost like a word cloud that I would do. It wasn't even full sentences. It wasn't, main chal raha hu. it wasn't even that. 
इट वॉज लाइक चलना टहलना दहलीज एंड आई वुड जस्ट से वर्ड राइट नाउ विद इन माई वर्ड लेक्सिकॉन द वर्ड दहलीज हैज ओनली कम फ्रॉम हिंदी मूवीज राइट ओके सो आई यूज टू देन गेट ऑन टू दिस डिक्शनरी नो शब्द कोश एंड ऑल वॉज लेटर लाइक इफ आई एम रियली स्ट्रगलिंग फॉर अ वर्ड एंड ऑल दैट्स वेन आई वुड गेट टू because to be able to write the thought in hindi is more important than getting the right word mm. because the grammar construct is also different right right and all nouns are either pulling or strilling and stuff like that right so it then became like now I, i've always said table maze mein bahut rarely bolta tha life mein but right. maze also is a is a school word but most of my hindi comes from lyrics right not even dialogue Right. lyrics right because like i'm in love with the sound of language right the oral quality of language not so oral, no, oral so, yeah, right, the, right, right. the oral quality of language which is why like you'll be like i can speak i can sing two three songs in tamil in tamil hmm not because i know tamil at all i don't know what the fuck it means but i'm like usi pole odambarinda teva illai pharmacy i can say it because i've just heard it so many times that it sort of hit me right? right so similarly with hindi i used to all literally everything i know in 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 hindi is it's not like like i've read premchand but i've read it a trans, i've read a translation right okay uh and it's my fault it's entirely my fault that i wanted to get through premchand fast it would have taken me 10x more time to read it in devnagari um and that's just i think it's a virtue of just being schooled in a convent school and right being brought up in bombay in a predominantly english speaking house environment right uh, uh, so i mean it's one of those regrets that i have like i'm a big fan of like i literally sit down with my friends who speak punjabi and i'm like sunna yaar ye sentence ka exact mere ko feeling wala translation de mere ko ye exact words ka translation mat de right um right. and 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 language is beautiful like it's so great right like there are some words like love has four words in english right but in hindi there are some fucking 20 of them mm. and each of them have come with a certain baggage right there's come a with a certain weight yeah right. there's a right. weight like mohabbat is very different from pyar which is very different from like you know so there is that there is that entire world which then suddenly opens up choosing the right word um and it's it's crazy like in hindi there's no word for for example there's no word for generous hmm. you would think that the right word is um uh, whatever that dil fake not dil fake another version of that but it's not actually generous it's actually somebody who is more it it, it generous has no like the word literal or, translation yeah or right. the adverb form of it i'm assuming it's the adverb generosity hmm. is not nahi hai shabd you know and and it's so great how there are non translatable across language so, right. yeah and it's 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 it baffles me as to why would this be the case right like is it because the language doesn't have it or is it because the language Context never needed, needed, needed it, it. Yes, yeah right. the language never needed it right right because in this country we are i mean traditionally have always been generous as a people right so there was no need for someone to be generous because everybody was generous right you know and it matlab you always went said shakkar de de yaar please shakkar khatam ho gayi i mean from something as simple as that to i don't know like uh kisi ko directions de diye yaar right right and right. i know that that's not a form of generosity at all but like it, it's very rare that you will stop on the road in 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 the us or the uk and say you know how do you get to this place right uh it's it's not as easy to do and it's not because we don't belong to the country because we speak the language just fine kuch to hai na ki hum log nahi kar sakte Right, 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 right. right. Uh, and it's so it's it's actually completely the opposite of behavior, because in 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 a lot of first world countries, 
literally you're walking on the street or you get into the elevator with a stranger you will always say good morning or you will smile or you will uh, say how are you uh, or some some random acknowledgement. acknowledgement of the person being there kya nahi hota right you just stand in silence and we'll like i never got the elevator jokes for that reason because it's never awkward in india <laughs> it's like i've never awkward there. in an elevator in india at all dude so why the and so to me and i'm like but is that behavior generous no it's not is this behavior generous no it's not so where, like to me i think that there is a lot of like i don't know there's a there's a wonderful um uh, ability so i'm very happy to this is the answer to can we do it in english yes yes that's a brilliant answer but i'll tell you something very interesting okay so i have this very weird habit whenever i'm pooping you know when mm. back in the day when the phones did not exist i would take a comic book i remember as a kid oh. reading a lot of tinkle and then whatever right that kind of stuff mm. and then later on uh, magazines readers digest and so on bathrooms are a great place for 15 minutes of quick reading now mm. they are replaced very quickly with reels and whatever tiktoks and stuff depending on what part of the world you're in right. and i have this habit i also don't get when people spend a lot of time on reels because i don't you know where i spend time facebook watch and i do it exactly for that reason because facebook watch will throw shit at me i would have never discovered otherwise like i've so, seen movies condensed fast forwarded 1.5x um like entire movies while i'm pooping because they've just cut the the important parts put it together uh, fast forwarded it's it like watching it. it's like watching amar akbar anthony on doordarshan which was just anthony story really why i don't know i mean uh, dd pe jab aata tha amar akbar anthony i don't know if you, i mean you're too probably young to remember i am but probably jab, yeah डीडी पे आता था तो डीडी पे स्पॉन्सर्स बहुत होते थे इस कार्यक्रम को प्रस्तुत करता है ब्ला 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 करके लाइक प्रस्तुत एंड ऑल फकिंग आई डोंट नो दिस वर्ड लाइक आई नाउ नो व्हाट इट मींस राइट लाइक निर्माता निर्देशक इज ऑल मूवीज राइट इट्स ऑल मूवीज लाइक देयर इज जीरो छेरंग एक अंक की इन माय इन माय वोकैबुलरी राइट इट्स जस्ट नॉट देयर माय फर्स्ट ऑफ माय फर्स्ट ऑफ द लैंग्वेज इज इज अबाउट आई मीन इट ओनली डेवलप्ड आफ्टर स्कूल there was a, there was a book called some kahaniya and then there was cherang ekanki which was like six plays in one and then there was uh, some like all of these but none of my vocabulary has come from there which it should have but it's just because the 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 education made it about isko rat ke reply kar dena right the thirst of the language actually happened post school where i was like fuck i want to read this and i want to understand this and i want to like i want to get it hmm. and because no one teaches you about the beauty of the language when you are studying it because we study english language and english literature we study hindi literature we yeah. don't study hindi language hmm. you know what i'm saying and that's a very big there's a very big reason for that hmm. uh, and so when you're studying hindi literature you're, when you're studying hindi hindi is not you're not studying the language you're just studying kahaniya kitabe or uh, and and write one kavita on this and write one composition on that and whatever and that's no way to learn a language right right, right. Uh, and it's, even it's if you are too practical uh, like the learning right. of the like right yeah and even when you're read and even when you're studying english look at what all you're reading no you're reading shakespeare and you're bringing it down all the way to i don't know flights of fantasy where you're reading wordsworth and 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 studying those kind of things and then the teachers are also able to explain to you the metaphor what's hidden behind it and why frost is this versus why i don't know eats is uh, this so on and so yeah eats yeah. is this and like you know uh, but hindi mein aise koi nahi sikha tha and it's so sad because i've had to discover the language literally on my through my own volition like i've had to go out and uh, seek it and it all started with because main jab gana sunta hu mere ko lyrics zyada pasand hote hain right uh right like i i i love a song when the lyrics are great right right and it would be stupid things like uh sometimes the lyrics are also not right but there's a poetic inflection to it which fucking suddenly blows your mind and you're like kya sahi likha hai bro isne right. and like for example wo na kahegi to khud kushi kar jaunga main yaro wo na kahegi to khud kushi kar jaunga main yaro wo ha kahegi to bhi khushi se mar jaunga main yaro right. i'm like dude wow. just look at the I, I it's it's in Om Shanti Om the song, but right. the the I don't know the compactness of the thought in just that little couplet right. is fucking beautiful, dude. Right, and it, there's no complicated word in that entire sentence. None. There's no Gulzar to no, it. There is no Javed Akhtar to it. There's no 
there's no delis in there's that there's no delis i know what you know what i'm bro so but, i'll tell you why i brought up the facebook watch thing okay so the other day i was pooping i opened it up and there was this little bit from justin bieber and justin mm-hmm. bieber is talking about how he doesn't understand any spanish but he's singing spanish lyrics for a song mm-hmm. right and this is something i noticed once i got here also i have no accent i have no american accent i have no ability to do an accent i'm not gifted in that way like mm-hmm. if i try same, i sound same. stupid right same, same. so Pas- i never try mesh do shabd bol sakta passport and atlanta i Plus. can say class and podcast but that can you say can you say basketball basketball something like that yeah right. i mean but I've, than me. i i i look at myself and i think i'm so stupid for saying that shit so i never did but if i sing songs like if i sing a metallica number automatically the accent is co-opted sab sab, sab yahi karte hain huh? right so there is something about music and lyrics that helps you understand the language on at least a very superficial level in the sense that you can say it um when it is coded between rhythm and tone and all of those other things sorkin ji ka to yahi kehna hai na ki music when when dialogue is spoken it's actually music there is you you will feel if a if a syllable is missing you will feel it right there is um, a r- inherent rhythm to speech r- rhythm to speech and, and i think comics that. get that very well like i'll get to that bit in a little while because i think you'd be able to pick that apart but i think one of the things that works for me in terms of writing i started as a poet like when i was a kid i was 16 17 i still have like about 100 200 poems written out from my music they good poems. like do you go back to them and are you like oh, shit kya chutiya tha kya no. or, or they still good i'm still pretty proud of them i okay. i use ah. them i use them explicitly for um, other purposes than putting them online at this point Got but it. but like <laughs> they were some of them some of them bro have a 10 on 10 success rate in terms of what they seek to accomplish right there you go so um for you me, have inspired me to try to choose words that aptly apply <laughs> lovely and fair a beauty that's rare right read on and i'll clarify um, so, so. but what that did was it taught me the rhythm to speech and so when i talk now it's very inherent in my way of talking where there is going to be a certain rhythm that helps me hold attention for people a little while longer because also what i'm talking about are things that are not inherently interesting to masses as a whole sub but, ted talk वैसे huh? sub ted talk hai. right i i'm in permanent ted talk mode bro <laughs> it, like interpersonally hanging also i'm in ted talk mode sab gyan hai everything is gyan after mm. a certain point and like also the other thing is that i'm not particularly interested in passing it on as much as i'm interested in articulating it for myself like whenever i'm not making eye contact as i'm speaking i'm already looking into like i'm seeing a thought and i'm chasing it with words that sort of That's my what, superpower yeah. in the limited Correct. sense of the word और मैं दूरदर्शन का स्टोरी खत्म कर देता हूं दूरदर्शन पे दूरदर्शन पे ऐसे आता था ये सो व्हेन अमर अकबर एंड देनी प्लेड वन ऑफ माय फेवरेट मूवीज ऑफ ऑल टाइम ओके मनमोहन देसाई अमेजिंग वन ऑफ माय फेवरेट मूवीज सो डम एंड एज यू ग्रो ओल्डर यू सी द डमनेस इन इट इवन मोर बट इट्स स्टिल वन ऑफ माय फेवरेट मूवीज ऑफ ऑल टाइम ओके आई वांट टू फकिंग रीमेक अमर अकबर एंड देनी एट वन पॉइंट लाइक दैट्स हाउ मच आई लव दैट फिल्म एंड इन अमर सो व्हेन यू वाचड इट ऑन डीडी the real pull was amitabh bachchan okay let's be honest right okay and while vinod khanna and 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 rishi kapoor's characters were great and zina daman and parveen babi and neetu singh were honestly just like that movie doesn't pass the bechtel test at all okay but uh, they were there in that traditional 70s uh, film right and uh, when it came on dd because they had to साढ़े तीन घंटे की फिल्म है या तीन घंटे पंद्रह मिनट की फिल्म है ठीक है बट एड्स के साथ साढ़े पांच घंटे की फिल्म हो जाती है होल फिल्म वॉज एंथनी विनोद खन्ना एंड ऋषि कपूर आर जस्ट लिटरली पॉप इन दे आर जस्ट लाइक देर बिकॉज लाइक परवीन बाबी I think I think Parveen Babi gets more footage than Vinod Khanna because Parveen Babi's narrative is connected to Amitabh Bachchan's narrative. Hmm. Hmm. Great. But three and a half hours, bro. That's a lot ah. for a film. Dude, you're. I mean, ye 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 koi ye sochta nahi hai, but that was average length of movies. But also songs, uh, in the nineties, were long. Like Kali Kali Aake is eight and a half minutes. Hmm. we don't re- it's bohemian fucking rhapsody mm. because it starts off with oh, and it goes into one rhythm then it has one uh, antra mukhda all of that then it has a bridge then it has a rap also which is mamila 
तुम मिले ऑल ऑफ दिस इज इन वन सॉन्ग इट्स एट मिनिट्स दैट सॉन्ग इज एट फकिंग मिनिट्स लॉन्ग ऑब्वियसली बाजीगर स्त्री आज दूध राइट तुम yeah. सात गाने डाल लो सेवन एट सेवन सेवन जा फोर्टी नाइन तो तुम्हारा उधर ही फोर्टी नाइन मिनट है राइट सो यू स्पेंड वन आवर जस्ट प्लेइंग म्यूजिक राइट एंड उसमें एक पॉपकॉर्न सीन होता था उसके बाद वो वॉट इज पॉपकॉर्न सीन पॉपकॉर्न सीन यूज टू बी रिटर्न इन मूवीज वेर दर एक्ट टू एंड हाफ बिकॉज इन इंडियन फिल्म यूज टू गेट थ्री एक्ट इट वॉज ट्रेडिशनल थ्री एक्ट स्ट्रक्चर बट इंटरवल यूज टू बी एक्ट टू एंड और Act two and a half. Huh. Uh, sorry, act one and a half or act two end, uh, depending on how they wanted to structure the film. Uh, and what would happen is, people would go out for popcorn in the interval, and then would come back. And by the time they got back, you would miss about four or five minutes of the movie invariably because line say popcorn up like yaar, or first two karne jaare, or the other way around or whatever. And so by the time you came in, there were some people at least like whatever thirty percent of the auditorium that would have. come in 5 6 minutes late so that 5 6 minute scene after the interval was called a popcorn scene because hmm. it had no bearing to the story very interesting like it was just one like bro when did we introduce music like the, these songs and whatever into indian cinema do you know when that happened because it is such I a have... rare phenomena no it's not i mean hollywood uh, i mean in the olden days was just musicals no because it came from theater Huh. you look at any gene kelly film look at sound of music look at any of these films in in the in the 60s or whatever they were all mo- motion pictures with soundtrack were musicals really uh, so they were all they were all song based hmm they, they, they were and i mean india may be you think everything's a musical but it's not like there are very few musicals right. that follow the structure of a musical right right right, right, right. because a musical structure is when i'm when my emotion is elated i will break into song right and whatever that emotion is sadness happiness koi bhi nav rasa koi bhi rasa ek pakad lo usme se right right so so usme se and this is my understanding of it this is not please i am not a film critic i am not a theorist i am not this is my understanding it's limited it could i could be 100% wrong we are riffing please we can be 100% wrong guys 100% no problem right so As long as to me the argument makes sense, I think I'm right. So fuck right. So the point was like, like Khamoshi for example is a musical. Right. A movie thing, thoda sa romani ho jaye. It's a musical. Dev D musical, hmm. right? Like, but uh, but Hum Aap Kya Kaun is not a musical, even though it has 14 songs, hmm. right? Because the narrative is not. Ne- but but Hum Saath Saath Hai is a musical technically compared to Hum Aap Kya Kaun. more of a musical because the songs are not there for entertainment they're also there to carry the, the story story forward right so right. in hum saath saath hai if you remember there was one i ye ab inse milo ji ye right right right, 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 right. where they were they going in the bus it no no that is a b c d e f g oh acha acha right 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 ha, ha. this is when the marriage happens and they are introducing the family to right ye jija ji and the, this is that and yeah right not just the not just the bride or or the daughter daughter that has come into the house but also the audience it's basic 101 exposition it's like i have to explain who the fuck these characters are i will do it in a song right so technically it does move narrative forward hmm. um and so so i think i mean musicals i think music has been a part of indian cinema in fact for a very long time and for i think even for hollywood or what what i would call the american film industry at some point it would I mean, there were only musicals, right? Mm. Till, till we sort of saw saw, okay, acting based stuff. This is going to be not right, um, because I remember I was very interested in film when I got here, and I mean, I don't think, like I said, aesthetically zero. I have no sense of whatever, and so I was lucky because Columbia's film department is a film department entirely on paper. Like they do not give you a camera or anything of that nature ever at all. They like do it on paper, and then we'll see, right? and i was also interested in film theory classes so i took one with this gentleman called nico bombak uh, who's no bombak's brother um and nico had this class where we went through like avant garde cinema russian cinema like in the 30s early on like how is film being developed there is a whole movie he saw he made a see 18 20 minutes about an octopus and it's literally a camera following an octopus in a fish tank and that was avant garde i remember sleeping through it twice in 18 minutes i slept through something twice and i was like what is this 
and then later on i took a class which was called cinema history since 1990 and this was with richard penya he is also a very renowned film critic and such and penya is one of the most amazing people i met at columbia bro partly because the man traveled everywhere like he had stories of getting uh, malaria in mumbai in the 70s like he has stories of spending time in morocco and he would tell this he would weave this into the cinema he's presenting right so we started with um, this film called benny's video from austria which is a cinema that the austrian government sponsored that if you saw that movie you'd look at me and you'd look at yourself and you'd be like how the hell does a government sponsor a movie like this because there is no sense that movie is completely dark and there is nothing light about it at all um then we saw jurassic park and so we moved on mm. to the blockbuster generation and then we traced mm. all cinema history we went to the middle east we went to east asia we went to north africa we went to uh, the states and so on and what are the movies mm. being mm. made in this time and except maybe there was a movie from china very interesting premise of the movie there were no other movies with music in there at all mm. that just did not exist um and so that made me look back into indian cinema and begin asking is this have movies become or were they always a modicum a medium to sort of there is no independent music scene as such in india up until now there is a little bit but 10 years ago there was no like you release an album and the album works by itself it has to oh, be no. it happened indie pop happened in the 90s right with the with the indie. boys and the girls that were playing back then no. on mtv yeah it wasn't just like it wasn't just viva and all of those people it was right. also like i lived through that there was also Uh, Alisha Chinai, Shan, Sagrika, right. Bali Sagu, Apache Indian. There, there's tons of these uh, okay. thing, and all iconic like Piyush Soni and um, I mean, yeah, fuck, I could just go on and on. There's a ton of them that uh, that did wondrous work. Uh, uh, Falguni Pathak is a is a product of that age. Product of that uh, age, and Baba Sagal is a product of that. And, Baba Sagal uh, represent. Yeah, yeah so yeah, I'm I saying see. there's 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 a ton of people that got their break from that pop uh, culture but parallelly there was a rock scene in india as well right like with i rock and and stuff like that and you had big you had big bands you had really big pentagram parikrama to were exports mm-hmm. uh, from from vishal dadani used to play pentagram and parikrama to were, were icons then you had the indian oceans and uh, mm-hmm. uh, all of that also happened and then there was uh, and i think indian ocean parikrama all contemporaries uh, then there was the whole like euphoria vibe who still comes and plays in colleges same song rock as a thing uh, became the the only issue at that point is there were fewer rock bands than metal bands mm. right like there was and and a lot of them doing originals by the way like zero uh, uh pdv or as we used to call them pdv they were pin drop violence uh fir uske baad uh, bhayanak maut aaya bhayanak fir, maut i heard yes fir vishvesh ka wo band kaun sa tha vishvesh tha usme um vishesh krishna murthy uh he's now a director as well um so uh, there were there were tons of these really great rock bands but predominantly just metal influence unfortunately hmm. uh, so rock as a scene happened but rock was always on the heavier side hmm. so it was hard rock plus hmm. there was no there was no ballads and there were no there was no that universe of rock right. right and then then came the vivas of the world and then came and now you have a proper thing but i'm talking about like i rock which used to be a concert that used to be held first next to zaviers in that auditorium and then uh, whatever i mean i rock was i mean what they've done they've been on since the 70s yeah mm. so there was always a scene but it was always an indie scene mm. uh, i mean delhi had some great bands Bangalore used to have great bands. Really? Um, yeah, uh, Kerala. They uh, what were they called? Uh, fuck, I can't remember. This is why I wanted to come with reference. Bro, no, you know why I'm why I'm asking you about this because it is like most of not all of them, but most of what you mentioned as a list of musicians I've heard of, and some <clears> of their music also I've heard. Right? Like for instance, I found out that Led Zeppelin had in fact toured India, and Jim yes. Thiel, who's mm. now an author. um and one of the most interesting authors to come out of at least the ones i have read out of india he has this beautiful book called narcopolis which is mm-hmm. about the narco development in bombay in the 70s bombay, and the 60s yeah. yeah right and uh, he opened for them and i found out that led zeppelin had come because i read up on jeet thail after reading his book and i was like whoa what and most of my music discovery because i'm 96 born 
I'm growing mm. up. I'm 10 in 2006. For me, mm. when sunburn comes about 2008 in Goa, I'm 12. That's my first exposition to the Indian music scene, which is independent of cinema, right? And I'm hearing about the Nikhil Chinnappas of the world and so on and so forth back then. Back then, also, um, I don't necessarily remember. Like there were a few rock bands from Chandigarh, etc., as well that you would hear of once in a while. But like it just Delhi made there is barely a scene. I've had friends. Hey, bro! Delhi used to have a great rock scene. Hmm. So that's what I'm saying. But like it, it all. I mean, it's literally rock on the story. Abi, sab ek banker ban gaye, ek ban gaye, wo ban gaye. Because rock me kya hi paisa hai. So uh, it, they all, they and and the others became musicians, right? They they went and scored ad films, so they went and scored music in movies and stuff like that. So right. Uh, wo ek wo ek dirt immediately ek vacuum create ho gaya. Because right. then came the advent of the late '90s, where <clears throat> abhi ham log world me economic status lainge. Right. When we disinvested the LPG the, and the, whatever. And, and, right. Yeah. And once all of that happened, then it's like mere ko abhi padke cutne ka bro desh se. So right. then it was padai. And not to say there weren't a th- there wasn't a thriving. It was never really thriving, hmm. but the, it, there was always. an indie underbelly of music and uh, thing that existed um at least in 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 the metros of delhi bombay bangalore hmm. calcutta chennai to some level jab madras hota tha right. uh, chennai to some level um hyderabad had i think hyderabad had one band uh, i remember in my year 96 was when i was in the 10th standard uh so Do you feel old <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean I'm fucking. I was born old. No, I so, you're smiling. That's why I asked. Huh? Uh, no, because you said '96, so I had to put '96 as a in frame context, of right? Yeah. So uh, there was uh, so there was a there was I think Hyderabad had a band. Uh, Kerala had some uh, really great bands as well. Chennai had uh, I remember two bands, and I'm talking about like even Channel V used to do a Channel V did a show called Channel V Launchpad. Hmm. which was about getting bands from across the country to play wo rock on mein wo jo uh, uh, gig mein perform karte hain uh, was it was channel v launchpad huh. i mean it, it it's not launchpad in the show right, in the, the show movie, but that's but, what they are inspired from that was the construct right? right the construct was there was a thing then it became okay let's then simpu came and said let's look for uh, india's first pop band uh, and then you got वीवा के पहले एक और था ना वो सिंपू एक कैरेक्टर होता था चैनल वी सिंपू द द टीचर बॉयज राइट 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 खड़े हो जाओ खड़े हो जाओ हां पंकज आई रिमेंबर पंकज यस राइट सो द पंकज भाई हां सो वीवा वाज वीवा वाज आई थिंक द सेकंड वन द फर्स्ट वन वाज कॉल्ड द चंदू की चाची ने दैट वाज आई थिंक द सेकंड वन आई थिंक वीवा वाज फर्स्ट एंड आई डोंट नो व्हाट देयर वर टू देयर वर टू दैट बिकेम रियली पॉपुलर दैट केम आउट ऑफ द द India's pop band hunt or whatever uh, it was. Even Hindi, so, bro. You know how I discovered Hindi because hmm. I had the same thing. Okay, and I feel like I was listening. You know, Amit Verma. Have you heard of Amit Verma? Who? He, Amit Verma does this. Very common pod- name. Yeah. Well, I I'm sorry. I take that back. But Amit Verma does this hmm. podcast called Seen and Unseen, which I think hands down is probably India's best podcast in this moment, hmm. right? And Amit hmm. is because he's not my age. He's not doing funny podcasting in any sense. He's doing very sincere stuff. He'll get policymakers. He had Montek Singh Aluwalia recently, oh, okay. and he's talking yeah. about the ninety one LPG and so on. And they're discussing it in detail that would have otherwise been inaccessible to me. So I was listening to Amit talk to his one of his friends who's a who's a writer. And Amit is a writer himself. He used to write for Crick Info back in the day, and then from mm-hmm. there so on. And they were talking about how they missed out on the Hindi train because what they were being taught, and they're probably roughly around your age. Um, and what even i was being taught i didn't go to a convent school i went to delhi public school which is the most average school that you can go to um was completely in english right the hierarchy of language which is an invisible force that exists in our society up until the moment i was in school was very clear right there is hindi and there is english and you have almost no incentive to operate in hindi except in the recesses of your behavior so you are talking to your friends in hindi the teacher comes in you'll switch to english very quickly right so the official exchange is almost always in english so like playground language is hindi and Correct. then classroom language or boardroom language is english and that sort of shape but humko to school mein maar padti thi ki tum recess mein bhi agar hindi mein baat kar rahe to we used to get but like but convent no unfortunately convent yeah. be like that <laughs> yeah um and so i 
found out I was linguistically talented sometime around middle school mm-hmm. when I started doing debates and whatever and I quite literally had very little to prepare like I would I could write in one flow I could present in one flow when things were great and so I took to English in a very interesting fashion as compared to my peers got on read uh, you know reading and writing and so on very early on like I remember 8th grade when I got Deathly Hallows from Harry Potter I finished it in 3 days and I picked up a notebook said I'm going to write the extension to this right like that kind of but what happened after is when I came to America the contrast became clear and I realized that the rest of the world really does not give as much of a shit about a second language as they do about theirs right like you will never see say a colombian person or a panamanian entity trying to co-opt the american accent they are very happy with their accent they are very happy talking slowly stumbling across words and even though that might not be the best answer in that situation like you would probably be better off working as a banker in new york speaking in english fluently but they had no internal guilt for that right and i began to look a little towards hindi from that reflective standpoint it was only like 2 or 3 years ago when i started listening to osho in hindi i had no respect for osho or like nowhere near as much respect for osho until i started listening to him in hindi and then i started listening to kumar vishwas in hindi and bro it like i remember just being smitten by words like god damn how can you be so good with the language i have heard mm, mm. great people great orator speak in english and it comes nowhere near close to these two guys speaking in hindi possibly because Correct. hindi is the language of emotion for me 100% 100% it is right there is no doubt that it it's not just a familiar thing it's also the phonetic nature of what we've grown up with it's also all of that and to be embarrassed of the language just seems so weird and so strange uh, i mean it, yeah i mean it's one of my biggest regrets that i don't that like i wish i was a lot more focused fluent. on yeah yeah no right. not just it's not even a fluency thing anymore because i'm more than fluent right like i'll get by in almost any state uh but i i just i wish i could we write beauty in hindi yeah i mean i do it when i but i do it occasionally when i'm writing an ad yeah but you know that's really where the, I, i'll have a t- but then that's the cheat right because the turn of phrase yeah yeah right uh, or you know uh, do an a b c mm. a b c a b right and you know like to right. you know you, and the c is huh imagined by the and the c is for you yeah right. or or you just or you drop the c hmm. so you got the attention in that science of listener attention wala right uh, thing, right like you'll do a floating opposite or you'll do a i don't know repetition bro you were saying these things as if i am supposed to understand this just from the conceptual word you have to spend a little time and explain this to me i'm not as smart are no no it's just no there's something called the science of listeners att- listener attention right which is how other people will consume what you say ha huh. so it's it, it, it's sort of Te- it it sort of teaches you and i've not learned this this is something i read up and all of that uh in fact i think um, anyway so the intention of being able to grab a person's attention and keep them interested consistently is not just by usage of complicated words and themes it's about using simple words to express complicated emotion Right. right so it's what gulzar does right in his in his lyrics right, right? his he uses dil to bachcha hai ji is a simple thought right it's it but it's a deep thought but right. it's simple words mm. right uh, uh, and or, or when he writes na lihaf thandi hawa bhi khilaf you, you know what he's saying right uh, music is great of course which is what makes the rhythm work but i'm saying there's no complication in the verbiage what was that bunty or bubbly ka ek gana hai wo jisne bol raha hai chaand se hokar sadak jati hai wahi pe aage ja ke apna makan hoga isme koi bhi lamba word nahi hai right but conceptually what he has told you is fucking the dream is so beautifully laid out right uh, and 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 so the, the explaining complicated but then it's also about bringing them back by saying i'm an authoritative person about what i am speaking about and so therefore using the right amount of 
jargon for mm. the lack of a better word to be able to express and then there's tricks of like sm- small guy big words mm. so small and big is floating opposite mm. uh then there is uh, you know just re- repetition which is tarikh pe tarikh tarikh pe tarikh tarikh pe tarikh milti rahi hai jat sahab with repetition right. uh and and you're getting so there's all of this and it's all subconscious i mean to a point where if you are a, if you are an able communicator you're doing this subconsciously but it's lovely to point water to a fish i agree right like it's lovely to understand oh that's why i've been sort of do and then you can do it better yes that's that's really in fact i comes. think what you're pointing to is um, is pretty much the structure of learning in the human brain because look the kid is learning to drink milk and to pick up objects and to play with them quite by default right they're exploring the world at large and it's happening they don't know how to describe it eventually when they become 16 17 from say 5 or 8 they're like oh that is what i do and then they have this like inward realization they discover back the stuff yeah, they've yeah. been doing up until and if you export it to learning almost anything at all when i think part of the school is schooling system messes this up for us you want to learn x go join a class no if you want to learn how to climb a wall first try climbing climb enough so that your instinct to whatever degree can be calibrated to the wall is calibrated to the wall then figure out where are you failing and then insert theoretical components there so what i tried to do with one of my magnum opus products which is art of conversation is i don't know theory for conversation i can do it very well i can keep people engaged to whatever degree i can and then i look back and i rediscover try to describe the process of what has to be done and then make it sharper along those lines and so um I think it is quite like that but is there resources for this kind of stuff like if i had to read up on this where would i go I don't know google science of listener attention <laughs> google me um i write listening theory what, what are the keywords i'm looking at science of listener attention would be okay. something you can type okay uh, you will get i mean there there's there's enough of these kinds of i think i think it's also a rabbit hole thing once mm. you start to look at certain authors and then you're like oh this guy writes about language and then Go go further down, and, right? And then you like, uh, then you start to. Isn't this a very important tool with comedy also? Like, I I found, I was I used to listen to this podcast by Andrew Schulz called called Inside Joke, which is very uh-huh. similar to Abhishek's jo- journey of a joke in that way. And what they would do is like, hey, you know, you take these two words out of the sentence, and maybe you need an extra word here. And what they're trying to do is phonetically fit those punchlines and premises with each other. And I was so fascinated because I don't see any other people talk like that. uh it's you do you just don't realize it it's mm. lyricists and lawyers mm. alliteration is a very important thing that you yeah. would use uh you know uh, and then you would flip the last one to not be alliter- alliterative mm. just so that you're like you know whatever lions lamb and something which Fishes. is not with it right uh, yeah. and then you suddenly what oh, yeah. because you've orally heard something off mm. because you want to hear lions lambs and lizard right uh, or lizard like right. you want to hear that and but when you say lions lambs and fishes you're like there's something amiss so you've actually caught me because you've distracted me hmm. as opposed to made me understand something so i sab theek hai wo but i i don't know if i'm right that's okay. the bigger problem well uh, but i'm hoping you are not because i'm hoping somebody <laughs> finds out you know what is a better way and the then they put right it in comments yeah 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 like this, this is just positive, for inspiration ha huh? this positive virtue of life i don't have huh? so <laughs> which is <laughs> with patience this, i'm hoping that you're not and then someone will be nice enough <laughs> to find the right to comments nahi padta kya apne video pe bhai main main nahi pad sakta apne comments video pe ha to fir bhai main bol raha hu to ha just like it's just impossible like i i don't anonymity really like takes away the uh, filter of niceness yeah bro so like it, your comments on youtube will become 90% more diluted in terms of both love and hate if the people are standing in front of you and verified yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. of course because the punch is coming But, yeah it's not just i'm saying human behavior is to i'm saying when do you complain have you ever written a good zomato review about a restaurant no you only write a <laughs> zomato review when it's shit right, right. so Uh, और अमेजोन पे जाके तूने कुछ खरीदा है अमेजिंग चीज तूने बोला बहुत अमेजिंग प्रोडक्ट है नहीं नाइनटी परसेंट लोग नहीं करता है right. 
right everyone's just hate shitting on like this is a consumer forum for only hate right bhai yeah so anyway no what is yeah so no lyrics and lyricists and lawyers talk like that because it's important to structure the argument in a, in in law hmm. uh, to be able to make your point more emphatically um and lyricists do it because they are stuck to meter hmm. uh, and so syllables are very important they are literally counting 1 2 3 4 syllable every need right and <clears throat> so lyricists and lawyers are talking like that comedians are talking like that because <laughs> i think overwriting i have this problem overwriting a joke will really take away from the joke uh, sometimes a punchline needs four words or it needs two long words and one short word uh, you know it depends on and you'll be able to hear it and you'll know that it's not but when it fucking fits it just goes click like it just locks mm. and you're like uh, and that's why sometimes you hold a pause and and a lot of people don't use the pause effectively um i'm saying people not comics i'm saying people don't use the pause effectively because they think what a pause does in the right spot in the right place allows for you to hold them just enough but not lose them hmm. and that sort of allows for um, a great moment of clarity so it lets you set up the joke let them several reasons right let them try to form the punchline and then you surprise them mm. or it you, you the premise is so heavy that you need that you need to let it sit for a second before like you said something absolutely outrageous right like ye t-shirt lal hai right tere ko chahiye na ek pause uske baad ki bhai jo nahi hai lal like in your head you're like nahi hai lal right and that you, but if you just said ye t-shirt lal nahi hai lekin lal ulta neela hai tune seedha bol diya it doesn't make it It, it, there's no there's no reason for them to compute that mm. whereas if you actually flip the joke and and worked it, it would really work mm. um you know it'd be like ye t-shirt lal hai aap log mr india nahi hai or something mm. like that i don't right, know right, fucking right, right. then and then you did the joke and then there's surprise or whatever tool that you are using for for the joke to land um but is this but how yeah, comics are talking to each other like when they're giving each other feedback maybe you should take a pause yeah, yeah. there How yeah the, maybe you should take a pause there yes but i don't think that comics do this we'll say that i think you're being a little too verbose in the premise hmm. or that the punchline is not landing because there are too many words to it hmm. but i don't think comics sit down and do um i don't think comics give each other feedback by saying do syllable zyada hai ya che right. syllable kam hai ya uh, whatever because I, a i think again it's a subconscious trait right. it's not a Verbalized it's not a trait. theoretically trained yeah so i most of you just know ki yaar kuch to missing hai bench aur mere ko lag raha hai do word aur add kar de ya not even do word aur add kar de i'll be like maybe tu ye bol fir tere ko right. sometimes it's just the it's just the because there's so much to it right like the word like you're doing a set like you're doing a 42 minute set or whatever you're doing 45 minutes and you suddenly use the word i don't know you suddenly use the word what kind of a word are you looking for that, that's what i'm trying to find the right <laughs> thing to give you that context right like you suddenly use the word oh fuck for the like uh, takya okay now if you've not heard the word takya in 7 days or 1 month that word has gone out of your imagination of yeah of your entire lexicon like of your zehen it's not there right and i brought the word back and because i brought the word back you're suddenly like fuck there's something there it's right. just by virtue of miniature nostalgia that i've got you back into the hmm. thing right like for example that's why i was trying to think of a word which has which you've probably not heard in a while hmm. that like i don't like know mose. like like mose right uh, right or like I mean, you've not heard Mose in a while, but people here yeah, would. Yeah. Have. Mm-hmm. So again, it's it's that. Like, but for example, I'm just trying to think of Datun. Datun. You've not heard the word Datun in a very long time. Yeah. So if you, in the middle of the construct of the joke, if you slipped in the word Datun, you fucking have them, mm. just because you use that word at the right time. Mm. So hey, I would do these semi-musical pieces early on in my content journey, um, and I would call them four rules. So. 
they were utilitarian. I would be like four rules for having a charismatic personality X Y Z A B C. And the writing process was very interesting because musically dumb. I have no idea, right? But I would be able to at least weave sentences that were semi musical. They would involve both Hindi and English, and what they would involve in the character of its Hindi was a very street friendly like Delhi Hindi. where the word banchod is not beyond my lexicon in that moment in fact it is quite a prerequisite because it means a certain something to a certain someone like a certain age group for them that is a very proximate word right and sometimes i would even like i remember this one line that became very famous from one of these things was um dhanush uthao arjun ye maa bharat tumhari hai right and it's probably the kind of sort of thing which is in the periphery of your imagination in your conscious lexicon and because i brought it ba- back in that particular context people were like what and i would never get why that would work at all i'll tell you also why it would work because the quality of the line sounds like a line from archaic text hmm. not from the mahabharat but from archaic text the word dhanush the word uh, think what throws you off actually is tumhari because mm. tumhari would not exist mm. but you have made it you brought it closer to me by saying tumhari right and we when we saw mahabharat on tv bhishma pitama spoke say, by saying tumhari right right so it made contextual sense mm. but the word that you've used where you said dhanush uthao arjun and the cadence of the of the of the line allows for you to just pull that pull that resource in your mind that part of your ram comes screaming out saying right ye suna wala hai right right very interesting i had like you always have an inkling that language works like that there is something to it but right. i never meet one more person who i can discuss the intricacies of how language sort of plays with your mind it's almost but like again i could be a 100% wrong like if there is a linguistic pro- linguistics professor who's listening to this they'll be like क्या चूतिया लर्न अर्निंग इसका द टाइटल ऑफ दिस पॉडकास्ट इज गोइंग टू बी नेविल शाह इज 100% रॉन्ग एंड देन वी लेट पीपल लिसन टू दिस सो आई मीन या आई आई गेट इट वी आर ओनली रिफिंग ऑफ ईच अदर एंड आई थिंक बिकॉज़ आई ट्राई टू लुक एट इट आफ्टर आई डिस्कवर्ड दैट कॉमिक्स हैव दिस पर्टिकुलर एबिलिटी अम टू रिमूव दिस वर्ड ऐड दिस वर्ड एंड दे दे लुक एट देयर स्ट्रक्चर लाइक दैट कनन इज अ जीनियस विद दिस हु लाइक कनन गिल अच्छा या ही इज अ फकिंग जीनियस बिकॉज़ द गाय ए ही इज अ uh he he has the ability like i, I like i envy him i'll tell you who all ashish akhya khamba kanan azim kautuk these five for me and also it's because of the proximity with which i worked with them uh, at some point in time uh they're writers yeah so they have the they have the training of a writer right and so they have the ability to think like that and then then they also are performers so they have the ability to because reading something and saying something out loud are two different types of writing agreed uh, and, and so when you write it uh, to when you write it to be read as opposed to when you write it to be performed there the qualities of writing change very very much uh, yes and 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 i think that these guys are able to structurally do this really 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 beautifully like um, there's 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 this girl also called natasha lagero she's she, if you ever get a chance to catch her in new york please do she's very very funny um, she does this as well right. i'm saying there are there are there are lots of people who but like Kanan is particularly strong with this like syllable count, figuring out ये word हाँ. इधर है, ये word उधर है, ऐसा uh, सब. Like, Bro, tell I, me I, the, the very little that I've written of comedy. Um, I found that by the time I'm going on stage, I've sort of dehydrated um, the humor for myself in that act. So, say for instance, I write a five-minute set, right? And now. because i have to perform it and there is no way i'm going to remember it i'll go over it a little bit i'll also try to fix it but by the time i'm reading it for the eighth time it is no longer funny to me at all isn't that something that you all encounter when you're writing stage pe funny ho jata hai acha yeah stage pe funny ho jata hai because i'll tell you why 
how many times have you watched i don't know friends how many times have you watched maybe like thrice right, sadly right? yes yeah no fine okay is there a sitcom that you watched office or or what the office i watched a couple watched? of times i watched brooklyn 99 three or four times so let's say let's work with brooklyn 99 more recent okay let's say you watch brooklyn 99 three or four times by the third time you know the joke is coming but if you're watching it with someone and they laugh you laugh mm. you know the joke and comedy is not funny a second time around right uh but it's funny if someone next to you laughs mm. and so because the audience laughs you also find it funny there's a discoverability to it right um i have a very different writing process there are a lot of people who do what you do mm. and i envy these people simply because you're going on stage with the confidence that i've written a funny joke right uh i go on stage with absolutely the like <laughs> Kautuk has said this several times across various podcasts about me. He's saying that for nine months of the year, Neville is the shittiest comic that. in the country. I've heard that. Yeah, like, he's the shittiest comic. But then for the remaining three months, he is really up there. He's one of the best. Right. The reason for that, I mean, I I don't believe it. It's just what he was trying yeah, to yeah, go yeah. for was shit versus. Well, look, uh, guys, listen. Neville cannot shit. take any compliments on himself, even if they are coming from someone else. So we will just let that be. Ha. Huh? No, no, it's true. So anyway, the point is. Uh, he that's because my process is very different like i go up on stage with an idea or a thought and workshop yeah i workshop it but it's an idea or a thought and my emotion about that thought hmm. what i actually feel about it hmm. so if i am angry about that then it's ranty hmm. if i think it's stupid then i'm being playing dumb the the emotion is very important to what my thought or my premise is that i'm going on stage with ab aisa nahi hai ki wo 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 jo 5 minute ya 7 minute ya 10 minute jo main jo main kar raha hu stage pe us pe laughs nahi aayenge laughs aayenge because i know how to get a laugh uh, that's not the difficult part but the bit doesn't make sense hmm. the bit is over worded um It just like there's it's just unfinished. so much. It's like that. It's not. It's unfinished. It's literally like a piece of meat with fat around it, mm-hmm. and you have to literally gnaw through the fat to get to the meat. Mm. Um, and so I am doing that performance after performance after performance to get that seven minutes or ten minutes to be seven or ten minutes. Mm. Um, That's what you mean. And which is why it is it is exhausting mm. to uh, to sort of. Uh, sit through things. So now I have because I don't want to put the audience through that for nine months. Uh, what I have started doing is that I do these little off Zoom shows quietly with Kautuk Algu and like Kautuk just calls his uh, people from his Reddit from what not Reddit Discord server uh, and I just go and I do seven minutes. So I one time I just said it, so he said it, and those people are free. They are not time pass. They are not doing anything. They are coming. Uh, so i'm not that guilty about it right um and then i once i've bl- 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 offloaded it on them then i know okay there is i've seen the first i, I know where in the fat the meat is hmm. so then i don't then i can just chop off the additional fat and then i have to gnaw through the fat which right. is an easier safer way to do it um and I and or i talk to somebody about it like 15 times like friends or something like that uh friend singular uh f- like 15 times and uh and because i'll talk to them for that that many times i'll get the joke like i know where it is and then when i go on stage it's it's it's, it's okay I like see. right now mai capitalism pe ek bit likh raha hu right. jo shayad maine tere ko kal sunaya tha right a little bit na laborious um philosophy correct hai theory correct hai idea correct hai लेकिन पंचलाइन एक तो मैं पंचलाइन लिखता नहीं हूँ आइडिया थॉट विल क्लोज फनी सो आई डोंट हैव दबिलिटी टू राइट दर्ज अ मैन वॉकिंग डाउन द स्ट्रीट एंड देन समथिंग आई कैंट राइट अ पंचलाइन आई डोंट नो हाउ टू डू सेट अ पंचलाइन आई डोंट नो हाउ टू डू इट आई जस्ट आई ऑलवेज वॉन्टेड टू एंड आई जस्ट कांट डू इट सो आई कांट राइट ऑन ऑन स्टेज वो एक प्रॉब्लम है इट्स सो इंटरेस्टिंग ब्रो आई रिमेम्बर स्पीकिंग टू one very prominent comedian from india and they said something very similar about their act is like i just take a bunch of thoughts and look if you throw me on a stage with a bunch of th- with a bunch of thoughts i'll keep you sitting there 
I don't know how long in a stand-up setting, but say if it was not a stand-up setting, I can speak for an hour, which is fairly interesting and so on. I know for a fact, like even the build-up of my stories, if I ever tell you a story, is very funny. I've had enough feedback on that front across the world. Like in every part of the world, I I once wrote this little piece. I'll send you sometime if you're interested. It said, I am a trader of stories or something like that. Where it was about how like when I was traveling a lot, be that on this side of the world or in India, um, I would go from place to place by myself. I never had company and I'd meet people there and I'd slowly seduce them with my stories to make friends and then it would become a larger group. Uh, so I was always very good at telling stories in that way. And up until say the 70% mark of a story, I can keep you very engaged. And it's only building up. And also those stories are very naturally crazy also. Like maybe I was telling you one about uh, South India yesterday. I don't remember. But they're also naturally very interesting. The punchline is such an anxious moment for me. And it's possibly because historically I've always fudged the close of a story. I cannot imagine. I would for sure bomb if I were going without like... I don't no, even know how to the, think of a punchline. That's you know the mean? act three problem. Hmm. That's the act three problem. What does that mean? Uh, Act one is build up. Huh, I mean, in, in, in storytelling. Right. Uh, uh, how many times have you come out of a Hindi movie and said, Yar, ending pakol tha. Right. That's the act three problem. Mm. Uh, where a lot of movies end up disappointing you because uh, I, I think if, if the ending is convenient, you, you're not satiated. Mm. Uh, if you're not satisfied as a viewer, you will always find something amiss. Right. Uh, and that's the thing. And the anxiety of the storyteller is how many loose ends am I tying up? Uh, and how many of these loose ends am I tying up conveniently? Right. Because if they're convenient tie ups, uh, haan, wo to aise actually uske jeb mein tha pura time. Right, like, right. If, if, like, you know, if, if it's convenient tie ups, then the satisfaction is not there only. Yeah. I, then have you written yourself into a well hmm, that right. you can't get out of? Right. Right. But with a punchline, I don't think it's that much of a problem. I think the the, the rules of a punchline are they have to be, it has to be unexpected. It should be a flip. It should be all of that, right? So the but if the story is engaging, Steve Martin कर लेता था यार. Steve Martin 15-15 minute बात करता था. कोई हँसता नहीं था. लेकिन फिर वो last में ना pin फोड़ता था तो तीन minute लोग हँस रहे हैं. So I don't think it has anything to do with as long as you leave me satisfied with the story. Uh, if you are a storytelling comic, then you're, you will ne- you won't have a punchline. But as long as you resolve the story funnily, you're fine. It doesn't have to be a punchline. Hmm. It doesn't have to be a punchline. Hmm. Hmm. That's very interesting. Because even now, I have no imagination of how to do that. Like I can tell very engaging stories. I don't know how to close that. So I will now remember act three. This is a very good mental model to sort of keep it, which is like, how are you closing it? That kind of thing. Hmm. Again, I could be 100% wrong if you're a linguistic Neville, al- theater professor. Neville's already 100% wrong throughout this podcast. And yeah. bro, what else? I, I'm also curious because um, you are openly very intellectually minded. Like as far as the stuff I've seen. Look, I know you hate compliments. I'm not trying to give you one. I'm trying intellectually to... minded? I'm a little bit. I'm a little bit. What can people say to be intellectually minded? No, it's a philosophy. It's a philosophy that it seems to be an intellectual man. No, I'm in an existential crisis. There's a lot of difference in life. Yes, no, no, okay. That is what I think. Like, um, I put up a post earlier on Instagram today about nihilism. Talking about how that is level one. And that if you can understand it properly, you evolve to level two. It's a video game analogy to explain nihilism and such. Right? And so I feel like philosophy begins the moment you realize the existential question. That is why people will smoke pot one time and they'll be like, suddenly, oh my God, all this, the stoner talk phenomena stems from the fact that suddenly all the conditioned layers of existence have been questioned and you can peer and look at the very bottom of what it means to exist suddenly, what it means to be you. Like one of the most confounding things that happened to me as a matter of realization in one of my journeys, whatever, I was sitting one day and I realized, bro, like think about how trivial this is. Maybe I'll do gross injustice to explaining this. No matter what I do, I can never know what you are truly going through. Like there is never even remotely a proper contact between two human beings. We are stuck and limited by the existence of our body and by the default imperfection of words. There's nothing that can be done. And that that places you in the existential realm suddenly. You're like, wow, I'm a singular unit trapped in a singular receiver. 
and i just have to continue doing that and once Correct. you begin thinking about these things it automatically flows from there that questions yeah, because, of ha huh. because empathy is an abstract concept no ha huh? what do you mean by that it it empathy is what you feel for the other person it's almost benevolent right it's not it's not actually i mean to me i mean this is the wrong thing to say but like it. it's almost it's almost like apathy is the true emotion hmm and empathy is the because Learned you are behavior. attempting to feel yeah you are attempting to say i empathy i mean it's a human emotion and we get it if someone is sad you are sad i mean you are sad for them you are not sad right. you are sad for them if right. they are a loved one the closer they are the more you feel are sad emotion. for them right but you are sad for them hmm. there's no you if you want to truly experience their sadness you have to be them right but if you for example if you are a sibling and you are both close to your parent and your parent passes away you both feel sadness but both feel sadness differently individual profiles of sadness this this per, and it could be intensity could be the same right but it's still two very different sadnesses right uh i mean and this is philosophy talk i mean right. it's not there is that's why i'm saying empathy is an abstract concept it's never going to be you're never going to tangibly tangibly be able to say ye 2 rupees ka sadness hai right 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 right, right. right. like this is 2 rupees sadness there is no give objective me, label correct right. there give me 4 rupees sadness i will give you 2 rupees sadness hmm. there's no exchange of that possible right right and so that that immediately even having a thought like that or for that matter you know if i i would often say if you if you require cosmic humility you don't need to go as far as religion even though you could but you could start with biology and if you even understand the first trend of biology which is the chain of evolution and how where and how it is coming and the questions that remain unanswered hey, you should disprint sar dard kaise cure karta hai sirf ye bhi puch liya tune to amazing hai na how does a disprint know where the fuck to go you don't have to be a doctor to ask this question i think it goes everywhere no it doesn't just go to your head it goes no, everywhere no there is some pain receptor which decides ki ye headache ka dawai hai kya I'm saying if you get a if you have a backache and a headache and you take a discipline your headache will go your backache won't. Ha. Huh. Ben jo usko kaise malum ki sir ko attack kar rahe hai bro. Right. Like, I'm saying I'm saying forget your talk about evolution and all bro. Right. Chhod na. Ha. Huh. Tu Darwinian economics chhod de. Ha. Huh. Main bol raha hai ben jo discipline sir pe kaise jata hai. Aisa. <laughs> I'm saying like it, it's just baffling no biology mein I mean even just you can question hey it's it's an education system thing right like we've not been we've not been we we were told what to learn nobody asked us tumko kya sikhna there was no questioning only na right questions were mocked or questions were discouraged rebuffed or right. buffed yes right yes. like there were no there was no and you could never ask ki aisa mercator projection map kyu sikh rahe hain hum log aisa nahi puch tu nahi puch sakta aisa ki acha but dharti gol kyu hai मैप में तो फ्लैट ये भी नहीं पूछ सकते लाइक नोबडी इज़ एक्सप्लेन इट टुक मी फकिंग इयर्स फॉर सम बुक वेयर आई वाज आई थिंक वाज इट ब्राइसन और समथिंग वेयर आई रियलाइज ओ ओके द रीजन व्हाई द ग्लोब इज इन दैट शेप एंड यूजिंग इज बिकॉज़ सी रूट्स वर मैप्ड फॉर एंड फ्लैट लेआउट मैप्स वर मेड फॉर सी रूट्स एंड देयरफॉर द प्रोजेक्शंस आर बिगर एट द इक्वेटर वर्सेस बीइंग स्मॉलर इन द एट द पोल आई एम लाइक ओ This oh okay when you किसी ने सिखाया नहीं है आखा लाइफ मैं सिखा है कि ग्रीनलैंड इतना बड़ा है और अफ्रीका इतना छोटा है नहीं right सच नहीं है that's not you know true they're not proportional the continent पे right <laughs> इतना बड़ा है bro <laughs> इतना बड़ा है how can it be the size of Greenland right right you can't ask only hmm. this question इतना बड़ा कॉन्टिनेंट है वो राइट right. दुनिया का सबसे बड़ा कॉन्टिनेंट है अफ्रीका राइट आई थिंक सो आई थिंक सो एशिया से तो बड़ा ही है ना हां हां आई थिंक सो आई इट डिपेंड्स ऑन वेदर रशिया अरे कट गए क्या मुझसे हां आई इट डिपेंड्स ऑन व्हाट हाउ यू ट्रीट रशिया इनटू द इंटायर इक्वेशन बिकॉज़ इज रशिया यूरोप और इज रशिया एशिया बट आधा आधा है ना वो तो नहीं हां ऐसा ही कुछ है हम लोग ने पढ़ा था कि रशिया एक्सपैंड्स टू कॉन्टिनेंट्स ऐसे सब ज्योग्राफी में ही पढ़ा था हम लोग right i remember that in fact hmm. uh, i think you are very spot on with that bro the the question of why and it's a in, it's a problem endogenous to the indian education system is beaten out of you it's pretty much beaten out of you and so like 
I never studied physics, 11th, 12th grade, whatever. I did a commerce wala stream, right? So I did accounts and such. But once I got here, I remember taking a class in religion that referred to some anomalous aspects of physics. So like quantum and whatever. And through that, I got into this six month period where I went everywhere from quantum to high energy to string, super string, combining forces, all of that. Because I had a why to begin with. And this is what happens when people come and like, what book should I read? I'm like, what is your why right now? What do you want to know? And people are so stunned. They're like, wait, what do I want to know? I don't know what I want to know. And that is the real disease within the educational framework that we have. Goes back to browsing, no? Goes back to browsing. What do you want to browse? Right. And I think there's a certain beauty to finding an unknown unknown, which is why I love Facebook watch. Because like I'll see shit I would have never come across on the internet. And it opens a new door in my head for inspiration altogether. Correct. You know what I mean? Correct, correct. 100%. What do you do for that? Like, what is your source of finding unknown unknowns? Nahi hai re, kuch source. So, abhi inspiration, where, where are you hunting for inspiration? Like, well, you were telling me about that one opener in one of your sets that has something to do with Gandhi. And yeah. I was like, what an interesting thought. Where did that come from? That's a very no, funny it, opener, bro, by the way. It's, it's about, it's about, it's just about questioning. Hmm. So, to me, it's about questioning things and so from there you are you are you are getting you're 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 going forward so it, to me i think inspiration comes from a lot of places like the the problem is now no uh i was very happy in the fucking 80s actually no, i wasn't but i'm just saying <laughs> like like you were really happy when you had a finite number of resources to finish okay he he is Satra B's author, Padlia, though. Okay, my intellectual, right? Right, my right. sort of life. Me, when you have done your whole day, I internet me, Jitna Padoka, me, right? Jitna Padoka, me. There are such great authors that belong to. I'm, I'm sure that there are at least seven amazing authors that I have not read in Bombay, hmm. right? Like, whether. Uh, she writes in Marathi, whether she writes in English, whether he writes in uh, French, I don't know, fucking uh, Hebrew. I, I don't care what he, she or they write in. But I'm sure there are seven at least authors in Bombay that I haven't and will never read. Hmm. Just because they won't, they won't come to. And it's so sad. Hmm. Like, it's just sad. So tragic. Yeah, it's just, it's like so sad that I won't be able to do it. And not for the want of me not wanting to read it. But Binchud, itna potha already hai padne ko. Right. I'm never short of the amount of stuff that I have to finish reading. Right. Never. I will, my pile of books increases or things that I want to read or learn about increases exponentially compared to the speed that I can finish it because I'm doing it. Right. Hmm. Like, <laughs> time has become so finite it's right. an impossible quantity quality right. it's just like so to me I think inspiration really comes in from I have a book at this Dawn uh, by uh, Octavia Butler and she writes this book it's a it's a 80s it's, it's, it's been written in the 80s it's fucking what a great book and it's it's I don't know I want to say science fiction but not really science fiction it's a story it, I mean no it would genre mein nahi dalne ga mereko right. but it's a it's a great book right it's a post apocalyptic world all right but it's for the time that i am reading it right now it's fairly asynchronous hmm. because a post apocalyptic world in the 80s is very different from a post apocalyptic world that you would write now <laughs> right <laughs> but that book has transported me i and i the beauty about that story is i'm reading it in 2022 and I'll, I'll tell you exactly when this book was written i'm going to google this before anybody says, oh, you're to Google. Kar rahi. Yes. So, Neville Google is right kar rahi. 1% throughout this conversation after this point. <laughs> Probably. Uh, ye? Um, what year was it released? 87. 87, 88. Right. I, I think I was right about that. So, uh, 87, 88. Now, the, the, the apocalyptic nature of world at that point is very different from the apocalyptic nature of world now. And I'm reading it in... 2022 but i don't need the context that this book was written in the 80s it, 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 to me it does seem asynchronous i'm like it's so interesting to have this perspective of an apocalyptic world mm-hmm. uh, even today even though i've I, you 
you've read a version of that kind of apocalyptic world because now we think that robots will end the world uh, back then it was the cold it, war it was something else and right. you know in 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 uh, in this book it's something else and right. so as a result uh, there's there's various things but fucking story is a story hmm. and it's and it's and it's wonderful so to me the inspiration i think comes from just like everyday things or like shit that even like reality happens and we can't pause that. and to me even questioning that in terms of like a really big moment will be interrupted by somebody doing something yeah that is uh, silly right right uh, right was award lene ja raha hai lekin lace bandh raha hai right matlab joota bandh raha hai tu bhai to award jeet raha hai bro it is so funny to me that that is such an interruption such an aberration to you about that um like i would l- love to sit and talk for an hour just about why you think that moment is so important hey i just think about it no like you're winning an award and somebody's shoelace has come off and we're all waiting for the shoelace to be tied right 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 and and, and to me you're like bro kya no or to राइट 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 एंड एंड तू सोच ना रियलिटी भी क्या चीज है ना कि लेस निकल अब लेस निकल गया कैसा जाएगा स्टेज पे राइट लाइक यू 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 विल फॉल ट्रिप एंड यू डोंट वांट टू बी इन दैट पोजीशन सो यू टाइड योर शूलेस फर्स्ट एंड इट्स जस्ट इट्स ब्यूटीफुल लाइक देयर आर दीस थिंग्स दैट आर जस्ट इट जस्ट सो बैडली सरप्राइजेस यू एंड वेरी रेयरली डू ड्रामेटिक मोमेंट्स हैपन ड्रामेटिकली Yeah. Like dramatic moments don't happen dramatically. They right. just, they just happen as a. कोई बाजू में छीक रहा है यहाँ पे कुछ और. It's a <laughs> the way I describe that. The fact that you know how art influences our perception of reality is very similar to how porn, which is erotic art or is supposed to be, influences our perception of sex. We think it happens differently than mm-hmm. it actually does. In the same way, dramatic moments are not hundred percent dramatic. They are. they're sprinkled with stupidities and like they're not they're not dramatic at all right they're not dramatic at all there is it's uh, unless you're watching a version of it right it is not dramatic at all it, i mean even the oscars are cut to be dramatic <laughs> they're performed to be dramatic and the nominees are right a b c right d sabke upar camera jayega fir pause hoega तो बोले एंड द विनर इज पॉज होएगा सब लोग ऐसा देख रहे हैं ऐसा लाइफ में नहीं होता है लाइक इट्स लाइक नहीं होता है तू अगर तू अगर ऑस्कर की कुर्सी में बैठा है तो तेरे को पहले ही मालूम है कि कौन जीता है क्योंकि तेरे को देयर इज दे हैव कॉल्ड यू टू चेक इफ यू आर डेफिनेटली कमिंग राइट 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 सो यू ऑलरेडी लाइक यू ऑलरेडी नो कि भाई तू जीत रहा है और यू नो लाइक तो ब्रो देन यू रिमेंबर दैट मोमेंट वेयर आशुतोष गवरेकर वाज सुपर मैड at the film fair i think this is back in 2003 4 something like that when he won an uh, award for lagan and there is this spat very famous between sajid khan and ashutosh gavrikar ha kuch to yaad aa raha hai halki halki like th- my point is moments like these that you see are they also weaved in preemptively or are they a function of somebody actually breaking I, character i really don't know i think rohan would be a nice know. person to ask that <laughs> no right. but i think 2003 no na ha uh, So I mean, two thousand three, no, two thousand three, twenty three is so Rohan would have been twenty one or something. So right. uh, I'm saying I don't know. I mean, the spat looked real, felt real, yeah, uh, was real, but again, was edited for drama. Hmm. Ah, I see what you mean. Wo ek takapur filters, you know. <laughs> how is it felt to you? It's right. cut, 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 cut. That's not how you are seeing it. If you're sitting at film fair. तू ये देख रहा है और दो लोग चिल्ला रहे हैं तेरे को क्लोज अप क्लोज अप नहीं दिख रहा राइट 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 यू नो व्हाट आई एम सेइंग लाइक देयर इज नो यू आर सीइंग देम फ्रॉम देयर वो वहां चिल्ला रहे हैं राइट वहां पे चिल्ला रहे और क्या हो रहा है बाजू में भाई फिर यहां पे कोई मक्खी तेरे कान में घुस रहा है कोई आके तेरे को फैंटा कोक दे रहा है यू नो देयर लाइक एट्स ऑल बार पे जाके लेट्स गो गेट अ बियर पीछे से फैन चल रहा है जोर से दैट्स द रियलिटी दैट यू आर एक्सपीरियंसिंग और वहां पे ऐसा चल रहा है लाइक आई एम सेइंग वेयर लाइक वर्ल्ड कप धोनी का सिक्स एट वन खेड़े राइट राइट लाइक एट वन खेड़े यू आर बैटिंग एवरीबडी वॉज लाइक नो बडी एक्सपेक्टेड टू हिट सिक्स ऐसा करके ठाक उसने सिक्स मार दिया सिक्स मार दिया सब लोग जीत गया हो गया ना खत्म राइट अभी हाउ मच यू एक्सटेंड द मोमेंट इज ऑन अस राइट 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 द मोमेंट इज उसने मार दिया सिक्स खत्म हो गया जीत गया वर्ल्ड कप वी लिव इन वर्ल्ड ऑफ प्रोलॉन्ग ऑर्गेजम्स ब्रो दैट इज वर्ल्ड कप ओवर 
correct the minute the and dhoni knew it before anybody else because the minute he hit that ball he knew that that's going for a six six right right so dhoni knew it a fraction of a second before the non striker and the other fielders right and the audience there was somebody who was sitting in the audience jiske baju mein ball aake gira hai right aur no, dusre stand pe opposite stand pe bench ko catch hone wale kya nahi sab log alag alag moment mein reality right. iske beech mein kisi ne kisi ko dhakka mara rahega kisi ne newspaper feka rahega kisi ka dupatta kisi ke aankh ke samne aa gaya rahega right. there's 15000 things that happened in that when the ball crossed the rope yeah but world cup kabhi jeeta when the ball crossed the rope khatam right उसके बाद अभी हम लोग जितना भी मजा करें उसके बाद ऐसा बस लेके आएगा ये लेके आएगा तीन साल तक हम लोग वर्ल्ड कप चैंपियन है करेक्ट है राइट सब करेक्ट है सब फेयर है लेकिन हम लोग वो मोमेंट को एक्सटेंड कर रहे हैं राइट मोमेंट खत्म हो गया राइट नॉट जस्ट एक्सटेंडिंग बट आई रिमेम्बर वेरी लॉन्ग अगो This is probably my last anecdote, and I have a couple of more questions, so I can let you go. It's pretty late, and I वहाँ पे भी. Um, I saw this movie as a kid called "You Hota to Kya Hota," hmm. which was a movie right. my dad took me to Pragati uh, Meda, not even a theater. Like it was just like I don't know why he took me there. It was a movie about nine eleven, and it's a movie about uh, six or five or six people who slightly escape the calamity of nine eleven. It's a Hindi movie. uh like so, somebody goes to the bathroom i remember they put their boarding pass next to them in the near the sink the wo, water jahan se haath saaf karte na for set and somebody places their bag over it and the bag literally sticks the boarding pass and when they take the bag away the boarding pass is missing so they're like where is my boarding pass and before they can figure out the flight's taken off and you know they survive that kind of stuff and so what that movie was doing was it's like vantage point also an english movie where there is a singular moment of extreme importance Correct. and leading up to that angles. yeah leading up to that what are the different stories that are happening now usually they are either in a format where they are then reconstructing all those stories to come out at exactly who was the perpetrator or like oh my god this subtle relief of slightly escaping a calamity but it is what is really happening is this 15000 stories happening in vankhade at that given moment which are pulled together by dhoni six and then prolonged for years as glory and we only remember that bit right that is what is really yeah. happening yeah okay acha tell me up two questions one what is your favorite place you've traveled to and two what's your favorite food that you've put on your tongue uh the best thing i've ever eaten i think it's got to do with the construct favorite place i've ever traveled to to me i think i'm like i've traveled to a uh, few i still want to go to faro islands and i still want to go to japan never been uh dying to go um i honestly i think new york's one of my favorite cities in the world like i've just and i'm not i, I we spoke about this like i've been yep. there way too many times hmm. uh uh i there are parts of new york that i think i know better than you hmm, like I'm even sure. though you've been there longer right, right? Uh, but like it's just i it's one of my favorite cities i think uh, it's the food capital I, for me it's the food capital of the world um because the churn of restaurants there the quality of stuff there the number of people that eat there and fucking every 365 days 24 hours a day there is a tourist in new york walking ye kya city hai right so uh, uh, it, it's fucking wonderful um it's one of my favorite cities in the world for sure i really like i i like london too um i think those those uh, thing um i also haven't been to australia um, mm. so i haven't been to australia or new zealand so uh, thing but uh, i like that i i'm a big fan of spain i'm a big fan of italy i'm a big fan but these are thing i think if you had to ask me one city where you could actually fly to every year it is hands down new york like right outside hands no right hands down like and i still remember like the first time i went to uh, new york it was during a blizzard uh, so december and- january february December twenty fifth or twenty fourth. It ah. was Christmas, so could have been twenty third, twenty fourth, twenty fifth. Um, and it was proper blizzard. Um, I was flying in from Atlanta, and uh, or Atlanta. Um, and the thing is, my subah ki flight thi. Subah, ham logo ham log gate pe pahunche. Bola ki sorry sir, abhi flight twelve hours late hai, because New York mein blizzard. So chance hi nahi. Bhul jao. So shaam ko abhi sana. So okay, ham log jagaya. Abhi shaam ko aaya. Um, shaam ko aaya. So bola okay, chalo we are taking off. get to new york and we're landing in laguardia so uh, we take off and uh, 12 ghante ke baad wali flight hai sab log late hai sab log pareshan hai wo fir land kiya new york mein to bola oh super excellent uh, blizzard mein land kar diya oh, oh amazing hai wo 
फिर हम ये स्टोरी बोला है एक्चुअली मैंने टिस्ट पे तो आई एम सॉरी इफ यू आर लिसनिंग टू दिस इवेंट एंड क्या एंड दिस इज माय फर्स्ट एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ दिस सिटी ओके फर्स्ट एक्सपीरियंस एंड आई गेट सॉरी प्लेन लैंड एंड वी गेट टू द गेट एंड देन द पायलट मेक्स दिस अनाउंसमेंट व्हिच फॉर एन इंडियन बॉय ग्रोइंग अप इन बॉम्बे दिल्ली में तो कम से कम सर्दी होती है राइट मैं बोला for a indian boy growing up in bombay this announcement made no sense huh. he said ladies and gentlemen we are really sorry we are going to have to switch gates because or, or what we are going to have to uh, switch gates or wait for this gate to thaw because it is frozen <laughs> so we will take another 30 minutes mere ko to ye what what is thawed yeah what is frozen oh. right what part of the gate <laughs> like right. how चल रहा है ये देश में ओके मैं न्यूयॉर्क में बेच चो दिए क्या फर्स्ट थर्ड वर्ल्ड प्रॉब्लम से यार गेट नहीं चल रहा क्योंकि ठंडा हो गया गेट हां सो आई वाज एंड आई एम टेलिंग यू आई कांट इट जस्ट इट्स नॉट कंसेप्चुअली सिटिंग ओनली लाइक व्हाट इज दिस मीन फिर मैं कुछ तो करके वो लोग ने कोई आई थिंक गेट चेंज किया फिर निकला हम लोग बाहर गया लगवाड़िया में लगवाड़िया के बाहर फर्स्ट कदम मैंने रखा है मैं फिसल के गिर गया स्ट्रेट आई हैव स्लिप्ड एंड फॉलन बिकॉज़ स्लीट Right. And I I thought it was snow. Right. But sleet, so sleet. I slipped, right. Tha, fell. फिर मैं देख रहा हूँ वो तो मैं मेरा दोस्त जिसके घर पे मैं रहने वाला था लिव इन चेल्सी ऑन ट्वेंटी सिक्स स्ट्रीट तो मैं फोन किया आ, कि ब्रो क्या करूं मैं तो बोला तू एक काम कर तू ये टैक्सी वैक्सी छोड़ तू ट्रेन ले राइट right. <laughs> oh, ट्रेन चलेगी भीड़ होगी लेकिन चलेगी चलेगी right. तू चल तो मैं गया सब घुसा और मैं और वो न्यूयॉर्क का फ्रॉम लगवाए तो यू आर लुकिंग एट मैप्स एंड यू लाइक ये ट्रेन ऐसा जाएगा फिर ऐसा right, जाएगा right. फिर ऐसा आएगा वो 26 स्ट्रीट राइट तो मैं कुछ L4 L734 B Q ये सब द सब इट टेक्स 3 डेज टू गेट यूज्ड टू हां करेक्ट ऑरेंज ब्लू ग्रीन येलो फिर ये अच्छा 1 मिनट वेट बट दिस गोस ओनली टू 40 सेकंड ये कौन सी ट्रेन है बेंचो 40 सेकंड पे ऊपर नीचे जा रही है ये कौन सी ट्रेन है फिर ये ऑल ऑफ दिस इज हैपेंड 7 7 गोस अक्रॉस हां हां फिर मैं बोला छोड़ फिर मिली ट्रेन बैठ गया एक ट्रेन चेंज करनी पड़ी चेंज करी 26 स्ट्रीट पे उतरा सो 26 एंड आई थिंक 26 एंड 6 और समथिंग राइट सो आई गो एंड आई क्लाइम अप एंड इट्स आई द थिंग इज इफ यू गेटिंग लाइक आई गेट एक्साइटेड अबाउट टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस बिकॉज़ आई लव इट सो मच राइट सो व्हेन यू आर क्लाइमिंग अप द स्टेयर्स फ्रॉम द सबवे एंड इफ यू आर कमिंग इनटू न्यूयॉर्क फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम इट्स फैसिनेटिंग okay it is absolutely fascinating because first the wind hits you right that's when you realize you hit an exit you are close to an exit so the wind hits you and it's fucking cold right okay and i look up and you don't see the street you straight see a building right and it's like in the movies right because it's new york is the only city that looks exactly like it same. is in the movies right right so you are like fuck kya building hai mancho main to main upar Finally, ऐसा बैग घसीट के ऊपर चढ़ा एंड आई पुट माई फुट इन एंकल से थोड़ा ऊपर स्नो और मैंने पहनना है स्निकर्स और अब मेरा बैग मेरे को घसीटना है स्नो बिकॉज वॉट एवर इट इज आई स्टिल हैव टू वॉक हंड्रेड टू हंड्रेड मीटर्स ऐसा तो नहीं नॉट इवन अपल ऑफ ब्लॉक्स आई टू वॉक बेसिकली हाफ अ ब्लॉक इट वॉज इवन टू मच ओके बट आई टू ड्रैग माई फकिंग बैग ओके सो आई एम ड्रैग इन माई बैग इन द स्लीट एंड मेरा पैर ऐसा है तो मैं उसके घर पहुंचा कुछ तीन वोट एवर सब तीन बजे टाइप डेढ़ दो बजे टाइप तो जैसे ही उसने देखा उसने मेरे जूते देखे बोले जूते अब भी उतर और बात तब में जाके पैर रख अपट फ्रॉस्ट You get, you get fucked. ठीक है तो गर्म पानी और उसने literally boiling hot water डाला है और मैंने पैर रखा है no feeling. Yeah. Like zero feeling. Yeah. And I'm like this is so technically you should hate. I should have hated this city. Right. But dude, I fell in love from that moment only. Hmm. Like it has. I cannot get over that city. There is everything that city. It, it, Except that peace. Is, you get everything here. No bro, peace be here. पीस भी है सब कुछ है हाँ. रात को दो बजे जाना हडसन के पास और बैठना चार मिनट के लिए ऐसा राइट 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 शांति मिलेगा तेरे को दो बजे भी छोड़ ग्यारह बजे भी जा जब वो ऐसा वॉल स्ट्रीट वाले लोग भाग रहे हैं हेडफोन लगा के तो के पास सेंट्रल पार्क के बीच में जाना जहाँ तू मग होगा तो दिन में जाना उधर 
बोथ पीस है ब्रो न्यूयॉर्क में पीस भी चाहिए मिलेगा फोर्टी सेकेंड स्ट्रीट पे नहीं मिलेगा कुछ नहीं मिलेगा फोर्टी सेकेंड पे चाइनीज टूरिस्ट मिलेगा I'm saying like there is everything that city needs. The next morning we had to go to D- we were we were taking a bus to DC huh. and we had to go outside one. We had to wait on near Hudson only, no? You take huh. a bus, right? So, no, no, not from. We weren't taking a bus uh, thing from the terminal. Huh. We were taking one of those private buses. Ah, huh, right. So it came close by only, close to 34th. But uh, so we had to wait outside a deli. Yeah, yeah. And this deli fellow wasn't letting anybody go until you bought because there's some jam. Of course, right. Can, और उसके पास हीटर था यार right. तो मैंने बोला छोड़ दो डॉलर की चाय दो डॉलर की चाय मैं जा <laughs> <laughs> दो डॉलर की चाय राइट right. शहर है यार यू ब्रो हम लोग मैं आई सेट अप अ शूट यू लव आई फाइंड अ ब्यूटीफुल लोकेशन आई बीन रिसेंटली वेरी फैसिनेटेड विद आइडिया ऑफ लाइक फाइंडिंग लोकेशन इन शूटिंग देर वील फाइंड समथिंग वेरी कूल विद यू ठीक है इन लव विद That's it. That okay. city, though. Do you want to close yeah. with what food also? Like, what is? So such no. A the the thing is, this is my this is my this is a true problem. Okay, I'll tell you what some of the best things I've ever eaten. Like, I the my death row meal. That's the answer that I try to give. Right, right, right. If you were on death row and they said one meal, sir, one meal. Konsa? Find me. It would be my mom's khichdi sauce. Mm. I've said this before. It's my mom's khichdi sauce because. Uh, and it's one of the I cook I cook fairly well. It's one of the few things that I can compliment myself about because I've got enough evidence across various uh, people and years. Um, so I cook fairly well. Uh, I would so go on to say that I cook incredibly well, but uh, I cook fairly well. And um, uh, it's one of the few recipes that I did not take from my mom mm. because. I liked the notion of not knowing when to, what went into it. Wow! Uh, and so, to me, I'll always regret the fact that I don't have that recipe. Uh, and I've, I mean, a lot. The thing is, it's a common Parsi dish. Kichri sauce is a common. You even get it at certain weddings. Right. The point is, it's one of those dishes. Har ghar pe dal kaise alag banti hai? Right, right, right. Vesa ye har ghar pe thoda alag bant. Uh, only by because of the taste of the house, I'm assuming that's <laughs> that's really what it is. I and it. I remember the way my mom used to make it, and I haven't tasted anything as the uh, even come that comes close to what my mom. And it could also be just the memory that's been recreated and set to a bar that can never be matched. Hmm. But um, but yeah, that would be my death row meal. But um, I'm not a I am not a person who will go to. Like, uh, unless you're in New York, because uh, how many bagels can you eat, and how many uh, these things can you eat? But uh, I'm a big fan of actually eating uh, uh, all kinds of food. I uh, truly experiment with my food. Um, I'm a big fan of authentic uh, cuisine as well. So mm-hmm. I will actually seek out chefs. I plan my holiday based with a restaurant that I want to go to. Right, uh, and then I and 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 I go like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but one of the most fascinating things that i've eaten was um uh, and it, it's very simple it's not complicated or anything like that it's one of the best things i'd ever put in my mouth uh, to answer your question of what is the best thing you ever put in your mouth um, it's a it's it's a brazilian meat preparation called picanha mm. um aur tere ko milega wahan pe 100%. but uh, uh, in any brazilian steakhouse you'll get it but the only issue is that you have to ask If you have a Brazilian friend, I do ask them to sort of picaya? go to a uh, picaya. Yeah, I'm ask them to right go now. to like a huh. uh, ask them to go to like a. They will probably go to a Brazilian uh, grocery and be able to pick up the right cut of meat, hmm. uh, uh, and then cook it the right way, like their mom or their family makes it. Right. Um, it's nothing. It's basically a chunk of. It's a hunk of rump uh, with a certain amount of fat. um and it's cooked on a wood charcoal fire um uh, literally like it's just basically you take salt and you put it around and you crush it and you put it in and it's on a wood charcoal fire so for like whatever and it chars on the outside completely is black on the outside and then you cut it but it's rare as fuck when you cut it like it's medium rare yeah, yeah. when you cut it um and you put it in your mouth with just that little bit of salt that's it by the way that's it it's just the meat and salt so that's it's a steak essentially it is yeah, okay, okay but uh, but here is what i will say bro that the i'm uh, sorry cuz i i almost got 
compelled to say this um the two two or three times i've heard you talk about you know your mom and i've also seen maybe i may be wrong but i think there is a particular bit you've done about it too mm-hmm. um and every time you bring it up i think there is something extremely unique and i do not mean this in the sense of just being a hack like i don't know if the normality of that incident and the way you paint it is clear to you as a performer it does something and i'm saying this as a consumer right mm-hmm. like uh, when i look at comics because i'm nowhere near a comic i look at them as a consumer and i think you should keep the realism of your comedy pretty front and center even going forward because it that does something bro attempt. thank you i th- and that is the attempt because um i do this across almost everything that is the attempt to a point where there is even a performative aspect of it which is meant to be raw hmm. which is that i tend to discover my punchline on stage hmm. i tend to discover the next thing i want to talk about on stage and that's performatively built in hmm. uh so the act therefore feels like if by the way if everybody thinks that oh this is how navel is it's not hmm. i mean before a show i have sweat patches and i'm dying but there is a there is a confidence that i think comes with being on stage with the mic uh as opposed to being Behind. not on stage yeah. with the mic right 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 like just before you go on stage grand for try always it doesn't right. matter whether it's an open mic whatever the stakes are it doesn't matter right. um so within the act um, there is a intended rawness that is built into the act of it's almost like main baat kar raha hu and i don't know what i'm going to talk about but i actually know what i'm going to talk about but i'm going to pretend like you know ah and then i'll say it so it almost comes off as, as but it's, it's a wrong. performative bit yeah, i see what you mean um, i see what you mean but the thematics also bro like oh yeah yeah, yeah. but no to me i think the emotion like there, there was a bit that i was talking about uh, with with mom and uh, which was about and i then brought it down to a very a uh, simple joke which was about the true thing about adulthood is the worst thing about adulthood is filling water bottles mm. because if there is one person who will fill water bottles in your house we'll get them to fill water bottles right right uh, and the true orphan inside happens is that you are only an adult you're an adult at 18 but leaving. you're only an adult once your parents pass when when your second parent passes mm. Because उसके बाद तू अपने ही फैमिली का नाम खराब कर सकता है राइट कोई तेरे को बोलेगा नहीं उसके बाद नो वन गोइंग टू टेल यू कि तू तेरा फैमिली का नाम खराब कर रहा है यू आर रिस्पॉन्सिबल लाइक यू नो आई नो एट एट आई नो एंड देयर इज टंस ऑफ दीस देयर इज टंस ऑफ दीस थिंग्स व्हिच आई ट्राई टू एक्सप्रेस दैट थॉट एज 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 रॉ एज द थॉट एज आई हैड इट व्हिच इज व्हेन मॉम पास्ड अवे फॉर द हॉस्पिटल शी वेंट फ्रॉम लाइक फॉर मी शी स्टिल मॉम बट फॉर द हॉस्पिटल शी वेंट फ्रॉम like whatever bed number 203 to body mm. right cuz right that's the distinction right but i try to keep it as real as that uh-huh. because that's when you sort of will actually feel the pain and then to be able to break it out com- comedically is right bro i don't know how that fine no i have fucking no idea how you do it because even like maybe it's just me and my circumstance right now like you know i've i've been through a toughish few months and the only people i've been able to fairly rely on without a doubt without having anything in mind is my parents mm-hmm. and i have a prolonged inability to see them uh, because i don't know when i can be in india next mm-hmm. um and so it probably is why it hits me right in the feels like but whatever it is i think i think is worth my time and i think it's worth more people like mine's time so good job on that bro like it took mm-hmm. me somewhere else out of this podcast just that one instance of the khichdi thank you so much for saying that i'm going to text my mom mm-hmm. right now you know ha uh, bhai mm-hmm. text your mom talk to your mom guys yeah. please you should right okay and even if she says shaadi karoge just say yes ha ha karunga na main kaun se mana kar raha hu right ha just accept it <laughs> just text